Yo, how's it going, everybody? Hopefully having a wicked one. Uh, Scott Devine, obviously, here. I don't know why I said my surname. Scott Devine, it's Scott here. And and today's podcast is a little bit different. I'm doing it as a solo show. But also, just to give you a heads up, that I'm going to be doing one of these each week for the na- next nine weeks. Now, that is not going to interrupt Ian and myself's flow. We're also going to be releasing the usual um the usual podcast as well but what i thought would be cool now the album that i have released is out in the wild yes if you haven't checked it out go to spotify or apple music or any of those other places that you listen to music and you will find it there just search for the divine king project uh, and you'll find it so you'll be able to check out all the tracks but what i also wanted to do is upload the full album onto the podcast channel that you listen on to it you know you listen to now but with a little bit of a, a difference a little change to it so instead of uploading just the music just the tracks onto the podcast channel what i thought is we listen to the track together so you're going to hear the track right now in a few seconds you're going to hear the full track and if you are over on the podcast youtube channel so if you go to youtube and search spl podcast if you're watching it over there you're going to watch the video as well okay so we're going to you can watch the video as well watch the video or listen to the track um, and then i'm going to give you kind of like a a little mini brief synopsis of the track itself i'm going to play through different sections we're going to listen to them together i'm going to talk about what time signatures it's in my approach to each section i'm also going to be talking about my tone and what i was doing with the bass any effects or anything like that i was using and all of that cool stuff so what we're going to be doing again we're about to listen to the track together or watch it together depending on where you're listening or watching this and then we're going to jump into the synopsis and again i'm going to be releasing one of these each week for the next nine weeks because there's nine tracks on the album and also if i hadn't or if you've missed it before we've had we've actually created an entire ebook for the album so you can get all of the tab and notation for the entire album and we're giving it away for free yes we're giving it away for free Um, all you need to do is go to scottsalbumbonus.com and you can get the free ebook there now with that said let's jump into the first track which is called game theory I'm going to listen through to it and then we'll jump into the synopsis. Here we go. Thank you. 
Okay, so that was Game Theory. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, and now I'm going to jump into the, the little synopsis to break down uh, what I was thinking about in terms of the tone I was trying to create on the bass, but also playing the thing as well. Because obviously, as you've just heard, it was a bit of a beast. There's some great playing going on there as well from Simon, who took an incredible solo. And I know that, that Dave Binney as well just absolutely tore it up on the sax as well. Great, great solos from the lads on that one. Um, now, in terms of the tone that I went for on this specific track, is it was really heavily um, towards the bridge picker. So, and the reason why I did that is I wanted the the bass to really cut through in the mix. It's really syncopated. It's a really tight sound, and I wanted the bass to you know sound equally as tight and cut through in the mix. So, uh, I dialed the neck pickup not all the way off, but like pretty far off, probably. You know, I had maybe, I don't know, 10 or 20% of the neck pickup still in the sound of the bass, but it was 100% bridge pickup. The bridge pickup volume was all the way up. Um, if you didn't know, the bass that I used for this, the F bass, had the, the neck pickup and the bridge pickup have... Uh, separate volume controls just like a jazz pickup so it's not a blend um, which you get on some bases it was just a separate volume for each pickup and again the bridge pickup was 100% up and the neck pickup was maybe 10 or 20% up on this specific track and I do change on the tracks as you'll hear as we go through the album I'm not always so heavy on the bridge pickup but I just thought for this specific track I really wanted to uh, to cut through in the mix now as you'll hear that first section, it's quite frenetic, right? And the first time I heard the uh, the the demo of this, I was like, what time signature is this in? It was just a, it was a little weird, especially when you just hear the, well, play it, right? Let's play the uh, the first section of it. Now, you might be listening to that. I don't know, like, when I listen to it now, all I hear is 4-4. But when I heard it originally, I was like, what's going on? So what I'm going to do is I'll play it again, and I'm just going to count. Well, when the, when the drums kick in, it's kind of obvious it's in 4-4, right? But just in case it isn't, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press play, and then I'll count it. I'll count along as it's going. Check it out. Here we go into the melody. Two, 
And when he gets into the melody, it's really just me holding down that bass line. Like, up until that section, it's been, like, uh, the guitar's doing it, there's a bit of keys doing it, you know, that we're all kind of playing it together. But if you listen to this melody section, it's just the bass doing it. Check it out. There, the guitar's really heavy with it now. Such a cool, cool riff. And to practice that, um, I just used a metronome. So I've had that metronome. <laughs> and um and it took me a while you know just to sort of like get the placement of the notes because it's you know it's it's a finicky little riff to get it down but it's uh it's fun and remember that you can get all of the tab and notation over at scottsalbumbonus.com as well if you want to see all of the notes i'm playing and play along and hey if you're a member of the sbl membership which you should be if you are a member i've actually created an entire course that teaches you all of this like you don't only get the tab and notation you also got all of the backing tracks and each song has like a 40 to 50 minute lesson with it so if you remember right now this lesson is up you can go to you can log into the membership and sit with me and i will teach you all of this for like 40 minutes 50 minutes and uh, in painstaking detail so you can give it a go yourself um now as we move through um, as you'll hear, let's listen to a little more. But um, when it gets to just past one minute 13 into it, you'll hear that it goes into a 7-4 section. There's a couple of stabs and then into this 7-4 section. And I absolutely love that section. And you'll hear as I play it, um, we'll listen to it in one second as well. You'll hear I start kind of tight. I'm kind of playing this tight riff, but then as Gergo starts playing on the ride cymbal, I start really opening up um, on the, the bass line itself. So check this out. I'll, I'll jump in now. <laughs> Stabs. Oh no, <laughs> completely wrong. Back into the melody. Now's the stabs. Now this is in seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 one, two, three, four. Yeah. Now if you listen to the bass, it's pretty tight, right? And listen to the drums. Gur goes on a hi hat. I'm getting some sneaky fills in there. Still nice and tight. Now Gurgo moves to the ride cymbal. Listen to the bass line. It's opened up now. Much longer notes. Now there's an awesome guitar solo. <laughs> so angular, isn't it? This is only four. Now, there's a stab section here. Um, and this stab section, um, I just had to learn the entire thing as one phrase. If you watch the video, I'm like smiling through this. I'm like, da -da 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 -da. And I'm smiling because I've practiced the crap out of this. And I know I'm not really counting. I'm, I've just learned it as one long phrase. 
um, which really freed me up to enjoy the moment. And it's really um, inspired by tribal tech, this, right? If you've listened to a lot of tribal tech in your past, like Scott Anderson, um, Gary Willis, obviously Scott Kinsey on keys um, for tribal tech. And, and he's playing right now on this track as well, which is pretty cool. But this is very tribal tech inspired, this stab section. And, and was probably one of my favorite uh, moments in the piece as well because I felt like I was in tribal tech. Anyway, here's a stab section and then we're going to go straight into the sax solo. Check it out. Here we go. Big low note there. And we suck all of the air out of the room. Oh, yeah. Now, the intention here is to be really ambiguous with the time. So we went from this, digger, digger, you know, this whole sort of like stab section down to this and sucked all of the air out of the room. I and mean, we're not giving you anything like what time is this in? Like, oh, it feels weird, feels like elastic. And that is very intentional. We wanted it to feel elastic. And then you can hear with my... Um, my approach to the bass here as well, I'm really not laying down any specific time. And that's because we wanted it. We didn't want anybody to give away where the time was. We wanted it to really feel elastic. And then as it moves along, you'll see me start edging into, you know, defining a little bit more of where the time is and getting quite tight as well. Like the thing that I'm playing, the little riff is quite tight. Check this out. start building this more of a tight groove coming up in just a second. Here we go. Straight in. David Benit just going for it, going for gold. Good go, listen to him on the ride, he's really opening up on that ride symbol now. Take it out. And that was it. Absolute blast to play. And um, I think this might have been the first song that I heard from the entire... Um, I think that this is the demo that Simon sent me first. And when I heard it, I was like... This is the vibe, you know, like it was, we were wandering into the unknown and we didn't know where we were going to end up. So when I heard that riff that Simon sent over, I was like, come on, this is going to be bonkers cool. And it absolutely was. Um, so again, you can give this, uh, you can give this a, a go yourself. You can go and get the, all of the tab and notation completely free over at uh, scottsalbumbonus.com. So you can get that there. And remember, if you are a member, you can sign, um, you can log in and you can get 
all of the well you know we're, we're dripping this out over the next nine weeks each week we're uploading a new tutorial a new workshop for the for the track that we've released okay uh, but right now you can log in and you can check out the full workshop for this specific track so i'm sat there and i teach you each an individual section as you go through and i really get into the details of how i was counting every section how i'm approaching it from a playing perspective tone and all of that good stuff as well because these are there's they're hard pieces and um they are hard but i would say they're also a bunch of fun as well and i really love challenging myself to play complex music and i think that um you are gonna enjoy it as well so with that said i'm gonna love you and leave you again you can get the tab and notation at scottsalbumbonus.com and and yeah i'll see you next week for another breakdown like this one that we've just done um but i think the um I think the next one is going to be Wired Telemetry. Um, that's going to be coming next week. Uh, really looking forward to, uh, to, to you know, for, for sharing what's going on in the track. But also make sure that you keep an eye on the YouTube channel as well because we're going to be uploading the videos that we recorded of the live performances onto the main YouTube channel every single week. So keep a lookout and I'll see you in the shed. Take it easy. Bye.